Hello everybody, welcome to this week's midweek thought for the day. Um, <clears throat> we're still thinking about Jesus' ministry and his identity uh, as the Messiah and we've been reading The Wrong Messiah by Nick Page, which is this book, um, which I can thoroughly recommend. Uh, so we're going to think today about um, the things that happen at the beginning of John chapter 6. So I'm going to read for you John 6 uh, verses 1 to 15 to begin. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. <clears throat> now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to get by bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. <clears throat> so that's the reading for today and it's a very interesting reading for me. I've been uh, reading through uh, the chapter, next chapter on what's happening in this book and uh, this is one of the stories that it talks about at this point. So Jesus is quite a long way on in his ministry at this point and um, we're just kind of listening to what's going on. It's nearly Lent. And in Lent, we often think about the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. Often a theme during Lent, we think about temptation and Jesus being in the wilderness and the 40 days and fasting and all those sorts of things. Now, can you remember the things that Jesus was tempted to do by the tempter in the wilderness? Well, one of them was to turn stones into bread. Jesus was really hungry and the tempter said, you could turn these stones into bread. And then if you think about the other temptations, and I'm particularly thinking of the one where Jesus is tempted to throw himself from the uh, pinnacle and be caught by the angels, but also the kind of surveying everything and being the king. So those are temptations to do with power. And Jesus also, when, um, when he's like bread, I'm hungry from these stones. I, I could do that, but I'm choosing not to do that. So Jesus had already refused. His boundary was already, I will not turn stones into bread. But here we find him turning five small barley loaves and two fish into enough fish and bread for lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people. So why is this different? What has Jesus done or thought about his boundary to make his boundary shift? If his boundary was, I'm not going to turn stones into bread, why is he going to turn bread and fish into lots and lots more bread and fish? Now I think something of this is to do with compassion. That Jesus was stirred by compassion for these people and he knew that he had to feed them. And I wonder for how many of them actually, it was probably the best meal they'd had all week. Enough bread and enough fish that anyone could eat. 
And so I wonder how that was for them. But Jesus had moved his boundary somewhere or his boundary had been defined in a different way that he was not going to turn stones into bread for himself to eat but he was prepared to turn the bread and fish into enough bread and fish for everyone to eat. I think it was to do with the compassion, the being good for people and the previous refusals of temptation had all been about power and we all in everyday life make decisions kind of ethical decisions we make decisions about where our boundaries are from what speed we're prepared to drive through our villages or what we buy what countries we let ourselves buy from what companies we will buy from what companies we won't buy from and there are nuances to all the decisions that we make about those boundaries what is it that drives our decision for a boundary to be a boundary that we will or we won't cross? Jesus was, of course, right to be anxious about what would happen when he did turn all this bread and fish into much more bread and fish because instead of it becoming about compassion, the people there wanted to make it about power again. When Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Jesus had allowed himself to move his boundary, to act compassionately, and yet people around him had interpreted that as a sign of Jesus moving towards power. But, and this is why this book is called The Wrong Messiah, Jesus wasn't going to be the sort of Messiah that they wanted, the sort of king that they wanted. And so he went away from that place. So curious things for us to ponder on this week. In particular, where do we place our boundaries and why? And if we do decide to move a boundary in our life out of compassion, how will we make sure that that doesn't affect the other things that happen in our life. It's been lovely to see you. I'll see you all uh, on Sunday. Uh, there's Zoom on Sunday morning. If you'd like the login details, message me and let me know. Bye.